to another episode of Houston Art Tribe. I am Kay Sarver and I am sitting here with Wayne Gilbert in I'm his Gilbert. studio. Mm -hmm. And very honored to be here. Well, I don't know about that, but I'm honored to have you with me, regardless. <laughs> I know I'm honored, for sure. Um, I'm going to just talk about something. Uh, okay. Of, this goes back quite a few years. Okay. I like to bring this up with almost everyone I talk to. It's like, you know, maybe when I saw them, their work first or met them. Yeah. And with you, it was both. And it was Gallery 101. Ah, <laughs> for the long that was in the 2000s. Yeah, era. that was a while era, ago. Yeah, yes, it was. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Well, now, was it the exhibition with the bullfight? It was right. Uh, yeah, I think it was right at that time. Okay. Because I remember walking into the room and seeing those big triangular uh, Eight pieces. shaped. Yes, uh, with the triangle years. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were just getting ready to do a group so show or something, and then everything, I think, kind of changed uh, at that point. Well, then we uh, left there and went to the Red Bud. And you went to Red Bud. Uh, yeah, to the Jeek Alley on, on 11th Street in the Heights. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and, and of course... a long time ago, yeah. That was a long time ago. But it left an impression on me because I think when we first started looking at the work in the room, uh, we didn't know. I, we were looking at, you know, the texture, and um, I was thinking maybe that, that the artist used clay or dirt or Whatever, something. Yeah. And then you walked into the room and started talking with mm -hmm. us and, uh, yeah. and, and explaining what you're doing, and I was... I was so impressed. Well, impressed um, is a funny word, but it's definitely eye-opening, I think you would argue. Yes. But that was the full intention of using the material. It was the end of about a 18-year search to find some way to, like, do what you just talked about, and that's like open up a dialogue yes. uh, yeah. between what it is on the wall that we're looking at that mm -hmm. we will eventually, in some cases, very small, but still, nevertheless, mm -hmm. make priceless beyond money when art is a very impractical thing you can't do anything with True. it you can't put it in your car and drive you can't do anything with it so that curiosity has been with me since i started making art yeah yeah and and that i think that's what impressed me back then although i couldn't tell you now what exactly was said but that you had talked about why you were using uh human ash and um that moved me and, and and we we must ask you a million questions Boy, back then. a long time ago i can't remember yesterday anymore no. so i'm but I, I i know it does lead into a lot of questions and they all are very difficult to answer because mm -hmm. um in a philosophical sense the idea that you would take somebody from a closet that has been discarded and take yes. it to the realm of art and make art with it you would argue would be a long conversation with perhaps really no beginning and no end. I'm sure. And so yeah. it is, it, it, again, uh, in my early years, I did, the fact is I'm rebuilding my website now, and so I've been breaking down all the different years yeah. uh, that I did, the early 80s, and the 90s, 2000, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm a little more familiar with it than I was because I hadn't thought about it in a long time. But in the early years, uh, I've used art for a little different reason than a good number of people do. I don't do it for decorative purposes or mm -hmm. to initially make it. I mean, I was always capable in my mind anyway of just developing a kind of art that would be well received and enjoyed and aesthetically attractive and yes. all those things that might make it acceptable by the people that like to write about it or talk about it or yeah. sell it or whatever. It's just never my interest. And of course, I know. it's turned That's out right. to be exactly what it was and that's a very lonely place because nobody knows what to do with it or mm -hmm. if they're going to do anything with it mm -hmm. and so um, the early years so when i started making art i made what is called absurd expressionism okay. okay and that was designed because my interest was not to show the world all of the things that we like to smile at and be happy with and accept <laughs> but this to portray all of the things of humanity that are so enormously mm -hmm. ugly mm -hmm. that we just don't pay attention to them and we move over them. Yeah. So I did lots and lots of paintings, for example, um, Jim Jones and the Suicides. Oh, yes. And 800 okay. or 1,000 people that would kill yes. themselves. Or, oh, uh, so 
or dancing Matilda where they talk about how the wonderful thing that these people are coming about without legs and all that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. So, I mean, I, we could go on for hours about the different topics that mm -hmm. I dealt with. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful uh, Bhopal morning, for example, when we, yeah. uh, Union Carbide, killed 7,000 people. So, my early years were um, engulfed with that. Well, they're no mm -hmm. more acceptable or approachable than the remains painting. Yeah. And then I went along for a while and, and then eventually uh, went into the triangle years where mm -hmm. uh, people would say, well, why are you doing triangles? And I said, well, <laughs> primarily because they're not square. <laughs> I was going to ask you that, but there you yeah, go. <laughs> that's, that's simple. Not all, none of this is complex. Yeah. Could have been, but it isn't. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> then, um, so I did triangle for years thinking that it could be interesting to try to develop images on triangles. Yeah. So. Yeah. And they were. And it's sort of you know, a lot of geometric forms there as well. You know, you talked about, and I won't stay on this topic of human ash. On I know that... Well, I'm going to get, we'll get into ash, okay. because it's a big part okay. of it. It's yeah, it really part. is a big part yeah. of it, I think. Because I was thinking, when you mentioned that somebody has ashes in their closet they don't need anymore, and so, I remember you telling us something about John Doe's and uh, Jane Doe's kind of thing. Well, is you occasionally get an unnamed box. And okay. uh, I've done paintings called an unknown man or an unknown woman, yeah. where uh, I did a picture of a, you know, obviously just make a picture of a human being, a woman or a man, and then mm -hmm. surround it with an unknown yeah. box. I, I have recently done an unknown family, where I did at my gallery. Now I have a family, a man and his wife and a kid who is me when I was that. seven years old. Oh my so gosh. those things. But again, most of the most of the the material that these funeral homes end up have names on them, but some of yeah. them occasionally just don't know. Okay. Um, okay. One of the most dynamic pieces of art, I would argue, I love the art world because there are those people that we deem academically, critically smart enough to know how to interpret art and yeah. treat us like we're either smart or dumb, <laughs> yeah. or worthwhile or not worthwhile. I get a little old and smelly. Yeah. Uh, on site, I don't like that bullshit at all it makes me very tired because I'm, uh, again uh, I've always thought over the years in, in my observation and mm -hmm. I like to think that I've tried to learn to speak with what I call the power of observation mm -hmm. rather than just talk about my perception and my yeah, understanding because yeah. it's all just my thoughts and there's seven billion other thoughts in the world but yeah. But the power of observation lets me know that if, in my opinion, you, mm -hmm. if you broke the art world down from my observation, mm -hmm. you would clearly see a lot of fairly substantial changes in the art world that you could argue would almost be willing to be special in a way. But a lot of art today or a lot of the years, if you were to take a lot of stuff they've deemed as, you know, the inside yeah. world, yeah. and you took it out and nobody's seen it before, you put it in somewhere else. And, it doesn't look to me like they would ever selected it in the beginning. So yeah. you have to wonder how this stuff comes about. And it comes about through relationships, yes. friendships. And yeah. if you read a lot of art history, you realize that Joe Blow knew Anne, and yeah. Anne knew Anne, and Joe did, and the, the critic up there was a good friend of theirs, and they drank wine together and all that sort of shit, and they made a famous artist. Yeah. So, yeah. again, I, I'm a little, I guess, worn out by it all in I some know. respects. Yeah, yeah. It's, and that's I, not to be positive or negative. No, 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 I know. Know, it's life just is that, just life, and it unfolds just exactly the way it's supposed to. And so. I so understand. I mean, I heard an artist say something about, you know, I don't want my art to be intellectualized. <laughs> I just, well, I don't I mind just, that. I wouldn't mind it at all, but they, but it isn't. You know, I no. mean, that was, you always wonder well, why yours isn't and theirs is. Yeah, because, you know, yeah, that's and, and, of course, in my case, <laughs> uh, in my case, I, 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 I have one of the most monumental pieces of art I would argue in the globe yeah. today, and I don't give a shit who agrees with me or not. Yeah. Uh, if you go to my gallery and you see a large canvas the size of this one over there, which is big, yeah, it's pure white, and in the very middle of it, it's got one small box, and it's an entire ashes of a little baby oh. called Baby Boy Brooks, and you just walk up to it, and there it is. Oh, and I would say, geez. okay. If you were to have any historical understanding of art, and you looked at all the art I've looked at, you know, I've been mm -hmm. to 25 countries, mm -hmm. around the world, I've been, you know, a lot of art. I'm yeah. old, so I've seen a lot. And you would say, okay, so they could, and this is probably the kind of thing you won't be able to show on the film, but nevertheless, 
they go to the extremes of defecating on canvas. Oh, I know. And no. then they write critical articles that <laughs> make these people famous, yeah. which is fine. Yeah. But I put a little boy's ashes in the center of a canvas, which could begin a dialogue that could never end. Yes. What it is about our good fortune that we can be standing here today, or sitting here today, mm -hmm. talking about the world yeah. and having had obviously a fairly enjoyable life. Yeah. And compare that to baby boy Brooks, who was born, died, cremated, left behind in a dark closet. Now, you could argue that that would be hard for somebody to understand or accept as contemporary art. Yeah. But, but that's not my problem. That's no, their problem. Because no. I, so when I get into this stuff, I get into it in a little different realm than a lot of other artists because yeah. it's just sort of my, I guess, my direction of enjoyment mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. the whole weirdness of not just art, but all. Well, and it's got to speak to you first. Not, I mean, foremost. That's yeah. That's the yeah. that's the whole thing. It's like I have to tell myself to forget, you know, how this might influence or whatever when yeah. I'm working on something. Just make it. Just, yeah. yeah. Well, and of course, we all, you know, we all have uh, to begin with to even explain why you would be be an artist. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing, I guess, to explain why you would be a businessman, but when yeah. you're going along and you're trying to decide sure. what you're going to be, sometimes you could decide to be a businessman or lots of other things, mm -hmm. but with being an artist, you sort of kind of end up being one, and you don't quite know why the hell you ended up being one, you know? Yeah. That wasn't one until I was 34, you know, and I had no I, earthly I idea. I read that, I mean, on, yeah. yeah I, I mean, it surprised uh, me, That's actually. interesting. So just decided you needed, you needed to express no, yourself. No, actually you? what happened was I came after the Second World War, and when I was growing up, we found uh, one of the most enjoyable things in the world, and that's drugs and alcohol. And we <laughs> loved it, and I did it to the abuse stage of what we refer to in my recovery program of Alcoholics Anonymous yeah. as the point of profound degradation and demoralization. Wow. But before that, I had just manufactured my way through the greatest rock and roll years in the history yeah. until it got really ugly. Okay. Well, so the point being is that after the war, when I was growing up, my mom and dad told us to get a job. Oh, wow. They didn't tell us to go study art yeah. or play the piano because I'm not yeah. from a very wealthy background. So the, so there I was, and yeah. I never did. All I did was go into selling oil field supply equipment, all that sort of yeah. thing like yeah. kids do. And so after sobering up, uh, for reasons that I would only give my dear wife the greatest gratitude for, Wonderful. she suggested we take some art lessons and I had never even thought about it. I thought, well, no, I'm not gonna, I don't, I'm not gonna take art lessons. I'm gonna go hit a golf ball or two, you know. But <laughs> I went and I had a psychic occurrence or oh, wow. you could refer to it as a spiritual awakening but not in a religious God sense because I don't believe in gods. Mm -hmm. But I had an awakening there that something inside of me when we went there I said, oh, I can do this, hell. Yeah. So, and I realized my mother was pretty good at it later on but I never paid Oh, attention. interesting. So that's when I started making art and then I went back to university when I was 34 I guess it was yeah, and got my degree yeah. in art I mean well I got a degree in painting but a minor in art history mm -hmm. yeah and uh, so uh, oh we got a phone call <laughs> could be from a wealthy collector <laughs> it could be no, it could be from the vet because my dogs were talking about my dog's foot more so anyway uh, so long story short uh, I went back and got my degree and then I just began to paint now I'm a little bit different than the vast majority of people that are involved in the art world because uh, my wife was the founder of our company. Okay. And we have a company that's been in business 42 years. Wow. We have 22 people working right now. We do all of the computer generated imaging, yeah. animation, video, et cetera, for Dell Computer, Hunter wow. Fan Company. Fossil Watch Company and a lot of other yes. national brands. Yeah. So therefore, uh, I spent my entire art making years completely engulfed in business as well. That's amazing. I did it all at nights and all at weekends, etc. As well as uh, opening the gallery business. I was just going to say. In 1999. <laughs> on top of that. On top of all of that, which it became a very big job too because yeah. uh, actually uh, making uh, exhibitions work yes requires a great deal of relationship with artists oh, you know so you know the whole thing about making a gallery job oh I mean, gosh, you gotta so hang the show you gotta get them all you gotta if you have a group show you gotta deal with uh, 25 different personalities that are all 
maybe about three quarters of them pretty easy to deal with and a quarter of them oh, are, you know, that kind of hurting thing. cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. And so, so with that in mind, uh, I come to the table a little bit different and, yeah. you know, and uh, having also put on exhibitions uh, around the world, because yeah. what I used to like to do, and I don't do it as much anymore because it's so much work. Oh, gosh. Um, we would go to see if I found a gallery in Madrid or yeah. a gallery in Bali or wherever. Mm -hmm. What I do is I do a little show of Texas artists, and then I bring a little oh, show yeah. of well, Madrid cool. artists yeah. back and forth. Yeah. yeah. I love that you became uh, very interested in, uh, you know, Helping other artists, showing well, more. it's, it's I mean, a principle that I learned. You know, you think these people would act like, okay, the good guy. That's not really it. Let me tell you what you <laughs> learn when you're in Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm. Is if you get something, you should give something back. That's it's right. just, um, it's just because it doesn't even make any sense, but it yeah. works really well. Yeah. And what happens yeah. is, is that you think it's going to be something that going to like roll out and you're not going to be able to measure but what it does is it makes you feel good about yourself so it's all very yeah. egotistical and self-centered yeah. yeah. believe me it's weirdly self-centered but yeah but in the same token you get something well the same thing holds yeah. true in the art world yes. a lot of people you know they and again we go into this comparison on whose gallery is cool and who's not cool and old soul and so is cool and Alan's not cool and yes. your gallery is not as cool as Joe's gallery and all that sort of crap all that social and stuff and at the end of the day you get worn out by it because you yeah. see the same art in their gallery the fact is I have people that act like that and they're I've shown about half of their artists, and when yeah. I showed them, it wasn't really cool. But when mm. they showed them, it was really cool. And that's not. And you just yeah. want to go, okay, now let's all calm down a little bit. <laughs> but it, it, but it is also fair to say that mm. because I don't generate, or because my entire intention is not to generate income for myself, but to try to make yeah. whatever sales I can for the artist, yeah. then enough to cover the gallery costs. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I fall into these places a little bit differently, I think, than most of them. I, I could see where that, yeah, I understand that. But you do have an appreciation for the arts anyway. Well, yeah. I so like you that. love to yeah, do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And art historically, um, you know, it. as I age and as I have observed so, one of the things that's kind of weird about it is, mm -hmm. is if I sort of like leap back 30 years, or 35 years, the kind of supply and demand scenario was such that it had a way of feeling so much bigger yeah. then than it does now because oh. it's just proliferated just like the population on the globe. Yeah, yeah. That's not to be good or bad, but that's just yeah. to mean that it, it filters it way and makes it, it far does. more difficult to get. It does. It's almost not sustainable. It's hard, yeah. And, yeah. and, and it, in a sales way, it's harder and harder Imagine. to sell art because your collector base is different it's yeah. changing yes uh, the digital media keeps them all from being quite as interactive yeah. so and then and you have to deal with artists websites yeah and because most of the galleries anymore don't necessarily and i'm speaking from what i think is information that i would mm -hmm. pretty much be willing to back up but Mm -hmm. I don't, most of them don't do contracts with gallery. With yeah, I'm seeing that trend, and it's it's probably smart. Well, I mean, it isn't a smart issue because let's just assume that if you had to sign contracts, you could very likely only have to sign maybe 12 or 13. Because if you did much more than that, or 18, you, you have to have give them a show every two or three yeah, years. And if you don't you. get enough collectors to buy their work every two or three years, yeah which in the old days you might be able to do that, but today yeah. you couldn't, so you would box yourself in to the point you where you couldn't. So in all fairness to the artist, you can kind of hope that they would keep in mind mm -hmm. that you exhibited their work and if somebody comes to their website, because you see, people yeah. are funny. Yeah. 25 years ago or 30 years ago when they had your gallery portion in there, yeah. it was just a matter of fact. Yeah. But they all know it now, so they yeah. don't want to pay X number of dollars for a big piece of art and know that half of that goes to you, but you still have to have a overhead coverage. Yeah. And because some shows sell better than others, you have to have enough overhead to cover the ones that don't sell. Yeah, I still think there's there's a lot of artists that don't understand how important that is that the gallery gets that percentage. Well, they, they don't to. know how much work is involved in it. And well, and one of the things you got to keep in mind is that it's not all the bad or bad idea for an artist to have something on their bio. You see, so that's, yeah. but that's one of the only things that really differentiate, differentiate yeah. 
differentiate, <laughs> Don't tell differentiate me to say it. the difference between <laughs> not being a show and gallery not. And then again, you yeah. know, when old Joe blows gallery is really cool, they, you know, they, you see what I mean? So it gets yeah. all kind of really messy. Yeah. And in the old days, it didn't seem quite as messy. No, I, I, I know, I know. I, I mean, I don't know what your age is, but I'd say we're old. close. I, me too. I'm, I'm 70, old. I'm 72. <laughs> so I'm going to be 70. In well, good month, for you. So you don't yeah. look at, you're aging better than I am. <laughs> I don't know. We have our moments. Well, I don't but. like it much, I could tell you. If I had any, uh, it's it's like one of the worst things about being old is the memory of when you weren't. <laughs> it, yeah. Because yeah. there's some kind of a matter-of-fact way of life that goes on yeah. without you paying much attention to it in mm -hmm. the way that you do as you get older. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, it, yeah. and you get a little worn out or yeah. you're you yeah. not. You know, yeah. So you get worn of, out. Yeah. My mother's 94. Oh, that's And good she news. said to me, and she's really still quite with it, you that's know, good. and uh, taking care of herself. And But she said to me, you don't know how young you are. And I thought, it's all perspective, well, and it's it, all uh, what we trick ourselves to think. You well, know? yeah, and of course, you know, in my case, I've had triple bypass surgery, and I've oh, had a yeah. mitral valve, or two open heart surgeries. Wow. And so, what then, any, if you have any kind of a dilemma like that, what happens is that goes into your brain. It does. And it runs with you all the time, because yes. you're never quite sure whether you're going to have another one, see? Yeah, true. So, so true. that, but those, but, but then again, on the other hand, I would rather be here with all of that than not be here. I so agree, yeah. Because you know, it's all good. the mystery, you know. That's really I'm good. I'm having a little trouble with the Trump years, but whatever. <laughs> oh, God. We don't want to talk about that. Oh, my God. You can God. edit that that's out. That's another, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's another thing, um, you know, in these times where we seem to be really struggling, not only as a, a community in this, the Houston area, but the nation and the world. Well, I it's mean, changing. You know, the truth of the matter is, is that evolution works. You might not like the way it works, but it works. And it so is. with the with the population explosion, and it's mm -hmm. exponential. So what's happening is every time you see somebody walk by you with three or four children, <laughs> and I you know. think, come on, man, let's maybe, maybe one, maybe one and a half, yeah. but not... Yeah. Trip. But then you think about all over the world, and if you've traveled as much as we have, and you've oh, been you. in the slums of India, or yeah. you've been on the Chinese back in the back country, or mm -hmm. in Java, and you see that those people are proliferating, or India, yeah, and they're proliferating, and then you think, well, that's all fine, except each of us have to do so much every day with yes. the same amount of plastic, food, toiletries, all that stuff. And, so, I mean, so anyway. Yeah. I don't know where we got off that on, but it's still. Uh, well, <laughs> that's okay, this is what's good about world, this. Yeah, well, the art world, that's, you know. Well, it has some, everything to do with it, and yeah. what, what drives you to do what you do as an artist, too. Yeah, I, I mean, think. yeah, I mean. So, uh, is your dog outside? No. I heard a bark, I thought. <laughs> I thought I heard him grumble, too. <laughs> well, but, uh, yeah, so you, you are still, uh, well, talk about, I, more about. Um, the the work? Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because all my topics were kind of, uh, again, in your face. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, right. if you make the dead end sign or the rough road sign out of human remains. And, dead end sign. Uh, this was strong. This piece that I have back here is about essentially looking out from behind the doors of death, i.e. about getting over when you're standing there mm -hmm. looking back at, you know, the world and, mm -hmm. and the experience of the trip you've had. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it was very interesting because um, I, one of the one of the delightful aspects of making this art it turned out that each of us have our own earth tone color when we're cremated. So that each, was fascinating. That's what uh, that's the single about. greatest question I've had all over the world. Wow. Is everybody wants to know where these colors came from? Yeah. And I went back to Rice when I was 62, I guess, or 60, and got my master's degree. Okay. And I had asked all over the world, and when I went back to get my master's degree, I thought, well, being at Rice, I'm in a, you know, it's a science education, mm -hmm. uh, you know, lots of this people that I thought might have some, yeah, but nobody knows, and it isn't the kind of thing that anybody would have ever even asked the question about. They would have never, yeah. nobody, nobody would have said. Well, I see a different color. The only reason I think I did, which I'm apparently one of the first persons ever did, I was, say was that I used enough of it to begin to see. You can see yes. one of my paintings is when it finally dawned on me that these colors were showing up and they were unique. Yeah. And so, but we, 
sort of at the bottom line, a lot of people think it's the amount of minerals, what you eat or what your minerals are, something mm -hmm, like that. Yeah. But it's not fires and all that kind of stuff. Okay, because I wonder that, and I imagine that would be the first thing answered. Yeah, well, I had a documentary out, and uh, uh, for anybody that might like to see it, it's called <laughs> ASH, yeah, I'll ASH, link it. <laughs> ashdoc.com will show you a little trailer, ashdoc.com. Okay, you can see a little trailer on it, but uh, well, they do approach the one of the guys that I got it from, and he talks about, well, this and that, and this and that, and this and that, but mm -hmm. I, I could realize, even when he was saying what he was saying, that he didn't have any science, and it wasn't yeah. really that. Yeah. So we still, it's an unanswered question, but... Wow. You know. It is really fascinating, and, and, and also, <clears throat> I, would, I would wonder, did you feel like... <clears throat> you were channeling these people a bit, did you? Well, you know, that's another funny <clears throat> element about it. I'm what is called, uh, I think if you look it up, I forget the guy's name that coined the word possibilian. But I have no established connection to any thought whatsoever in the universe of any greater or lesser power. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a <clears throat> mystical person mm -hmm. or any of that sort of stuff because mm -hmm. uh, I have decided that there are no ways that humans could finalize thought. Okay. That it's too gargantuously endless. Okay. And it, uh, they can't, you know, where did it begin and where did it end and yeah. everything in between. So Infinity. I try not to come up with any any idea that would. I have obviously I'm a, enough of a human to have great reverence. Yes. And personal <clears throat> concern, and mm -hmm. I don't let this stuff get away I mean I treat it with the greatest of respect because I understand mm -hmm. uh, again my great life and their unfortunate yeah. end of life whatever and a lot yes. of them weren't by the way a lot of these people that left behind doesn't mean they didn't have great lives because oh. a lot of times they might have many different reasons for mm -hmm. not being picked up as there are yeah. but so I don't really go there much but it's 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 just that there's no way to establish anything outside of the moment okay yeah i mean and that's about as that's, weird as you it all be about feeling could i mean if you, <laughs> it could be anything you know, if you, it's, true. I mean, it's like this guy i saw something come through the web or something said there are 44 religions on the earth but don't worry yours is the only real one <laughs> yeah okay so all right so that <laughs> okay. just means if i was born in this place that's what i'd believe and if i was born over here maybe i believe in that one but yeah. at the end of the day who's Who to knows? say who's right and who's wrong yeah okay. i wondered because you know um you know, if there's energy. Um, well, that's it. But how would you figure out where it is? I mean, I, the whole I, I for know, me, it, the me, it's it's been trying to figure out how to just accept it without needing to have it defined in order to accept it. Well, true. Being. Yeah, it doesn't have to. I be. I mean, it's such a strange experience. I mean, yeah. I think it is. I think. I think. Yeah. I don't know about uh, anybody else. But, but I'm just. It's really poignant that you say that about the color. You know, although I see this one in front of us here, of course now. Two colors there. There are colors there. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I, I do mix oil painting with it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But on the right side, it's one person, and on the left side, it's a different person. Yes, yeah, yeah. The back room and the front room. And so you mix the ash in the, the oil paint? It's no, I don't mix it. I did early because I didn't really realize the colors, and I, I didn't really. Oh. So early in there, I would mix it with different colors to make things happen to yeah, it a little bit. Yeah. Not a lot, but. I would enhance it if I needed a highlight or a shadow or uh -huh. something like that. But then after I began to realize the colors, I stopped. And now I only use it pretty complete. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, and just when it's on raw state. But pretty I mix powerful. it with a, a really expensive uh, gel medium. Okay. Because yeah. I couldn't, when I was beginning to try to figure out exactly what to do to make it work, Yeah. Uh, I went to the art supply store and I picked some up and I smelled it and of course it had alcohol in it and I thought well so I tested it early on to mm. see if it would crack when it dried. I wondered yeah. If you and sure enough in one of my paintings I think it was the dead end sign I'm not sure which one it is Difficult. but anyway it, I just made the out the line mm -hmm. uh, on the, on the, and it, it did crack a little bit and then I surrounded it when I got the new material which is a very pretty expensive material that doesn't, doesn't and, crack. And it's uh, there I noticed they're on canvas too. Is that yeah. and that so so it's flexible. It can yeah. be flexible. Oh, yeah. I wonder. And it, is it heavy? Yes, that piece behind me is about 120 pounds. Wow. Okay. They're very. Uh, people say, "Well, you still making art?" And I'm, you know, 
I don't make near as much of it as I did yeah. for several reasons. Number one, nobody collects it. Nobody. I've got the most quiet <laughs> phone in the world. I never hear from oh. anybody. Like, okay. Yeah, it's okay. I but know what, you're what, doing what, it what, because what you. What we're dealing with is paradigms. Yeah. Human beings have paradigms. They have walls. They have places they can't transfer their thinking from one world to another. So true. This is one of them. Yeah. So for them, it's it's, it's, some, it's some personal. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it is in a way. It is. See, so I don't sure. I don't get too affected by it because I understand. I, I I guess at one time I really did think that it was compelling enough to maybe be embraced in the greater conversational world of mm -hmm. world art yeah. because of the nature of it and uh, uh, self-centered wise <laughs> I would like to have had it take off like that because sure. I would have enjoyed traveling the world and being a part of things and having yeah. fun and yeah. talking about it and getting free trips to everywhere for that. <laughs> but it good. wasn't and instead it is an incredibly quiet I never get invited to shows I never get, I mean, almost of 90% of the things I did, I either did myself or the Gus Capriva, of course, did a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and occasionally, but very seldom uh, do I ever have anybody that even wants to see it. So, yeah. to make it now, when you make a 150-pound painting, and what you're going to do is let it dry, let it get ready, get it fixed up, and then take it to my warehouse. Okay. With the other work that I've had, which <laughs> I have a yeah. big storage unit just yeah. full of art, which uh. everybody in the art world, yeah, is dealing you, with that. Yeah, I know. That's a that's and, and the older we get. Yeah, I saw a uh, somebody forwarded me about an hour program a bunch of bunch of people that are very involved in the art world, talking about the art that artists have yeah. outside of those that are in the inner circle that get you know secondary market value where you yeah. can sell it. So they just don't know what to do with it. I know. Like, what's going to happen? <laughs> You know what? Nothing. I actually know. Everyone I speak to. It's the I same thought about thing. what I might do. Man, I have a lot of it. I might just get a find a piece of property up in the hill country somewhere that's and have a backhoe come up and dig a huge deep <laughs> hole and, and uh, put yeah. the whole warehouse down in that hole and cover it up and put a little plaque on it and wow. go home. But I don't know. An interesting thought. <laughs> well, ain't nobody going to do anything with it. And of course, in my case, not to make it different than every other artist in the world because it's yeah. all equal. Yeah. Every artist that made a piece of art is exactly equal to me. They have no, no better, no worse, no different. I mean, each of us are exactly the same. Yeah. But in the case that I'm dealing with, I am dealing with a material yeah. that has a little flavor yeah. Of, yeah. that That's gotta makes be. you feel a little bit different about it than if it was just an oil painting. Yeah. That, even though yeah. an oil painting can be as important as, as any other painting, but it is it is a bit of a problem. Oh, yeah. Trying to figure out what to do. I'm glad that you didn't sway away from doing what you were driven to do, though, in no, spite of that. It takes a lot to drive me away. That's I'm not independently middle class, but I'm close enough <laughs> that I can do what yeah. I want to do. Maybe that's part of what, you know, equates success, at least to you or most of us, if, if you're not driven away or, you know, because rejection is a huge thing. I, I've never had any problem too much with rejection because I'm so self-centered that I believe in myself. Yeah. And I, and I really don't give a shit. <laughs> That's good. So, but, well, I mean, I just don't care. I mean, why would well, I, we why, all, why, why, why why would I give anybody bit. the right to care about me? I agree. No, I mean, no. I, I, yeah. I mean, it, this stuff gets old after a while. It I, does. I haven't been able to figure out what in the world this hierarchical element is that allows yeah. in most yeah. predominant ways yeah. the people with the greatest counts of cash. Yeah. Anyway, it's all bullshit. It's just <laughs> stupid. And that's another nice thing about being a part of Alcoholics Anonymous for so mm. many years I'm, is, is that in, in, the, in, the, in our world, mm -hmm. we talk honest. We don't talk. Yeah. We don't talk like we're afraid in church that somebody might not like what we say. Yeah. So you we get the talk. best inner experience of humanity anywhere on the globe. And if yeah. you listen to it long enough, you'll understand that at the best possible oh my level in the world that you can ever yeah. reach, which I've reached, yeah. Yeah. is ordinary. Yeah. That's all I am. I'm just yeah. ordinary. I'm no better, no worse. Well, it's interesting you too, you know, saying that because I've often heard of um, other people I know that, that have dealt with, uh, you know, have gotten into alcoholics and sure. and and that philosophy it just oh, carries fantastic. through life. It's just well, it's a program whereby they give you tools 
to, first of all, you get a maximum of self-respect. Yeah. And they give you tools to balance out your relationships with people that gives you the freedom yeah. to not have to be embroiled in it too much. And it's very, it's, it's, it's a shame that the world can't have it. Yeah, but I know. you have to have something pretty ugly to use it. I know. So they know. don't, but anyway. I know. I know. There's another topic. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, it's unfortunate, but still. And, you know, that's a, that's a, um, that's, anyway. I know. You're, you can already tell I talk a lot. I love that you do. So I you think this is great. You know, I, well, that's so what this the, is about. So the other people you've been talking to. You know, I have a lot of good gallery exhibitions coming up and yeah well yeah. that's I'm excited yeah that's right we should talk I mean G-Spot is yeah. a great space and I love how you transformed it over the you know the period you've been there yeah, I got lucky because uh, I liked the G gallery over on 11th Street a lot it was big and comfortable and and yeah, uh, nice etc but then when Gus decided to uh, essentially help his friend James Searles yeah and I think in all honesty he probably wanted that whole space yeah he won't admit it but he wanted the whole space for himself so he could do both show big shows which yeah only yeah. made perfect sense and I see now that he's yeah. doing it it makes it pretty clear yeah which is good because Gus is unarguably uh, one of the most contributive persons in the city of Houston oh, he just totally. does more shit than 99 percent of these people and of course they treat us they treat everybody like we're north of I-10, so we're not blue blood enough. No, to be cool. no, this is like one of the yeah, spots yeah. we always come. Oh, yeah. Your your gallery, his gallery, he, it's like by far. He he's are, big because he's put yeah. his, he's put a huge effort into it and oh, done no, more for the artist. So when I lot when he did that, I thought, oh gosh, what am I going to do now? Because I mean, you know, I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, finding a new art space. Yeah. Um, so I just happened to be walking the dog, and I noticed a little sign in that 1932 storefront. Yeah. And sure enough, it turns out that Boss Poulos from Rice University uh, had had a studio there for a while, and a oh. couple of other artists had, and they had already opened the whole thing up, and it had a nice, you know, so it just yeah. perfect, was just tailor-made for it. It was and, great. Yeah. No, it's good, and I, I love, I usually come the day of your openings. I don't make the evening so much, but I like to come and look at the work. And, yeah. Uh, I missed this last one. I, and, yeah, that, I she's come. actually a Ph.D. Uh, student of Rachel Harmeyer and Brett, her husband, and uh, she's actually a Ph.D. I, I'm not sure, and I should know this, but I know she's getting a Ph.D. degree in rice hist and art history mm -hmm. and or is an adjunct professor there or not, but I know mm. that that's a basic, okay. yeah. What's her name again? Uh, Rachel Harmeyer. Okay. And her husband is Brett. Okay. Now, on the 20th, I have an interesting thing coming up, a, a guy that does essentially bio, bio uh, ecology type stuff. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you saw the printout on that or not. I didn't see it, but I it makes me recall another uh, Amy artist. Tran is the author. Oh, okay. She will be there, and this guy runs around the world and goes and finds unusual uh, um, ecological animals and, yeah. and caves, and, and he had like 30-something million hits on YouTube wow. for one of his videos, and he's we're going to do it on the 20th, and he also does drawings and mm -hmm. uh, cartoons and all kinds of interesting things, and it should be a pretty eventful evening. Oh, God. Oh, good. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite places in town, well, honestly, that. and, and uh, just because it, I think it's just, you know, it stems from the person who's running it to begin with. You just have, uh, uh, it's interesting and treating, it's not, you know, down the same path. It, it's a little love, bit different. I love that. But it's the G spot. <laughs> I know. Say? I mean, <laughs> that's, I think that's Gilbert's spot. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> right. Sure. I mean, the whole world looking for it. Anyway. It's a great, yeah, it's a great yeah. name. Come to begin, and the idea, you know, I, a lot of people uh, talk, ask me, well, where do you get your ideas? And I say, well, I don't get them. They come to me. Yeah, yeah. I don't ever, you know, I know a lot of artists sit around and, sketch and come up with it or make ideas etc and I just never was good at that I had to be driving around or in a <laughs> car or sitting at the you know waiting for the doctor's appointment or somewhere yeah. else and then pal it comes to the idea came across and then I just make a quick sketch of yeah. it and then so most everything I've ever made has come about that way I've yeah. never just really done one just to I think it's more a natural process because when I force it or if I tried in the past to force an idea 
you know, oh, I want to do something about this. And yeah. it just, it, didn't, it wasn't me. It didn't yeah. feel like me. Yeah. It wasn't personal. No, I it know. Yeah. yeah. It shows. Well, and I think that's kind of, well, I think, yeah, you know, and um, I think some people get into a place where they get kind of famous for it and so they keep making they it. It's yeah. very hard for people to change directions when they make art because people, I know. You know. Yeah, yeah. Especially if it is successful, you're right. It yeah, because gets... the, the next group of people, I like where you went. So <laughs> yeah. Like where you were, but anyway. That's another tough one. Yeah. Maybe it's better not to be so <laughs> yeah. collected. <laughs> well, I haven't. I've got that problem. I can. <laughs> I think I do too. Oh, God. Can you think of anything else you'd like? I can't think of anything else, but this has been enjoyable. Well, I've enjoyed it myself. Thank you. I always love talking about myself. Shit. Yeah. Good job. It's been good. I've enjoyed it say, immensely. You know, well, and you know, I sound just like the rest of your artists, only they got their story and I got mine. So. Well, that's right. And that's the whole point. It's a story. Yeah. And it's it's just depth of character. It's getting to see who you are. And, yeah. and I love that. That's why I'm doing it. Well, I've yeah. enjoyed it, so that's cool. Good. You want to look around the house now? Yeah. Say, say goodbye to everybody. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching, okay. and please do yeah. like. Yeah. Thank you for letting me be me. <laughs> I appreciate it. Signing Hopefully, out. If you've got anybody that's got any extra cash, come on over. <laughs> All right. Keep us both in mind. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. good. Okay. We'll, we'll right. just...